This area around Bremer Bay, which really covers a real stretch of coastline that encompasses loads and loads of different and beautiful beaches and sand dunes and bush, it's an area that has an incredible magnetic pull to it. A lot of people that come down here are actually from Perth. They will travel five hours on the highway going past amazing places like Margaret River and Albany just so they can get to Bremer Bay. Some of them even love it so much they buy a block of dirt down here. I'm going to try and show you why in this episode. Josh, final episode, mate, for this season, and a bit of a drive in here. Have you had any any thoughts on your travels so far, mate? Thoughts and feelings are plentiful in here. I was reflecting just before about how crazy people might think I am for agreeing to drive east to west across Australia with a bunch of blokes I never met, and uh, not really having any idea other than that about what we were going to do. In fact, I still have no idea. I know we're headed southwest along a track. Don't know where we're going. Well, I can give you a little bit of a heads up, mate. First stop is Foster Beach and the Bremer Bay area. And this is, well, it's just one of the nicest slices of Australia. My background is in magazine publishing. And when the stories come in on this area around here, I used to always publish them because they always sort of looked a lot prettier than the other travel stories. It's definitely shaping up to be a lot prettier. I think this is, am I right in saying, first sea mist of the season? It certainly is, mate. It's um, rolling in off the ocean. I'm really, really glad that I said yes to this adventure because I didn't just make a few, few new mates out of it. Um, I saw some places in Australia I probably never would have found out about. I guess that's kind of the point of the whole show is to try and show people parts of their country that they've never heard of, wouldn't have even thought of unless they happen to kick back on the weekend and flick on the telly or on the app or something. It's not about you or me, it's about uh, the people with their own forbies who want to explore Australia and uh, I'm glad to hear it from your first hand perspective that uh, we've shown you a few new spots. beach now and I've just activated sand mode and straight away I can feel the change in the vehicle so the throttle changes we all know that sand is soft so they've changed the throttle modulation to give you a little bit more grunt at the pedal it doesn't give you more power overall but it makes the vehicle feel a little bit more sprightly because you want to be more sprightly when you're trying to stay above soft sand not sink down into it the other thing that they've done is they've actually introduce the differential lock into that mode so I now have the rear locker activated which is a little bit unusual but this is really designed for beginners to say hey we don't want you to get bogged you pop it in sand mode and you're gonna be okay so it's really quite a thoughtful thing to do um, but the nice thing is if you actually don't agree with that and you say no Ford I don't want to have my rear differential lock in not interested in that then you've got all the manual stuff you can do as well. So you can simply activate four high and you can put in all the modes manually if you want to. If you decide you want to put the rear locker in, well, you can obviously activate that yourself as well. So pretty nifty bit of technology here by Ford. What a beautiful spot to take it all in. But there was a dune behind me that was calling my name, and it looked like a doozy. And now heading back up off the beach. Looks a little steep. Let's see how we go. <laughs> a little burnout on the bottom there. Gee, this is, uh, this is a great little hill climb. Nice. And it hasn't been driven a little while. She's blown out a bit, but there's a little bit of rock in with the sand. So you don't have to drive silly to get up there. Well, tough decisions. It's time to exit the track. And I don't know with this tight corner, 
whether I should go with the diff lock or not. But I'm going to, and I may just live to regret it. Like that. Ah, uh, Josh, I've lost you. Yeah, what happened there was a classic case of should I put the diff lock on or shouldn't I? And I chose to do it, but um, still didn't make that corner quite as easily as I could have. But I got up. Never say no to the technology. That's it. What, what a place I just drove into. I'm in a valley of sand. Isn't this just, you know, for an East Coaster's eyes, we don't get this. Often, we've probably got these places, like on Fraser Island, but we're not allowed to drive on them. Whereas here, go for it, team. Wow, one almighty sand bowl we're driving up here. Oh, soft drift and I am bogged. <laughs> oh, that is such a cool hill. I just had the foot pegged and this one little drift caught, caught me and then in the process killed you. It's a really odd thing to watch, you know, what is essentially three tons lumbering up a hill but making it look easy and then just come to a sudden stop out of nowhere it's you just i guess that's the definition of a sand trap isn't it and it got you well and truly yeah and this is one of those hills where i don't think i can just um have another crack at it i think the crack starts at the bottom here so you want me to reverse down this here hill that is as steep as what feels like the Everest I'm driving. <laughs> I think it's our only way out of here. Okay, I have now engaged low range. I've checked my tyre pressures and I've knocked a couple of pound out of my rear tyres. So I'm now running about 13 psi in the back. 14 and 15 in the front because I've got the little gauge up on my screen here and now well never let it be said that the Foster Beach sand dune beat the old Patsky. Let's see how we go. <laughs> We're leaping off the mark now with a little bit more urgency and because we've got low range gearing, it is just, I'm literally not even giving it all the throttle. Now I'm going to really start to peg it because I'm getting near that spot and I'm sailing over it. Uh, but, oh, it's still a little bit boggy and it slowed me right up. But now I have hit the harder stuff. There's a few rocks here. I'm grinding my way up. Will I make it? Will I make it? Man, this is a long June. This is such a long June. Let's see, let's see, let's see. We're doing it and ah, <laughs> made it to the top. They know how to build a sand dune in Western Australia. They build them big, they build them long, and they build them much bigger than the East Coast ones. I can tell you that. These are angry dunes, my friends, and I love them. Possible to do it in car. Piece to camera here. So you'll have to forgive me, viewers. I'm driving. Come on, you good thing. Oh, yeah, I think we actually might make it. As long as I don't speak too soon. Oh, what a good feeling you get when you drive up a track. No wonder so many people do this. Welcome to Australia, welcome to four-wheel driving. It is the best thing in the world. Was it worth the effort? What do you reckon? We arrived to an incredible barren oceanfront moonscape. You find us on the windswept sand dunes between Foster Beach and Bremer Bay in WA. Perched high above the ocean and accessible only by four-wheel drive, this remote stretch of Mother Nature is vast, 
wild and beautiful. Uh, this is a classic place. You go from a really, really awesome sand hill to some really, really awesome rock driving. This is proper moonscape stuff, folks. Absolutely stunning with the backdrop of the ocean. You wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Man, how soft is that on the downhill? You couldn't drive up that. It's funny, like I'm staying to your tracks and I'm finding holes that you didn't fall in that are just appearing after you drive past. It's just, the sand is bizarre. I'm hard pressed to think of another place in Australia where you can do this kind of essentially cross-country driving with such a beautiful backdrop. Yeah, I, nothing springs to mind, mate. I, it still just doesn't feel like it should be allowed. And I'm looking at a, I mean, is it a sandstorm? I think we can call that a sandstorm. I'm glad we're inside. <laughs> in fact, it was blowing so hard that our $13,000 drone, which is capable of 88 kilometers per hour, was being swept away. In desperation, our drone pilot, Tommy, landed it somewhere in the sand. And then we just had to try and find it. Well, Sharky's track is the track that links us along to Dylan's beach. You can see there, she's, oh, yuck. She's really, really tight. This track has not seen hedge trimmers in quite a while and I've folded in the clear views and I am just getting these awful scrapes up the side. So never mind, my car is vinyl wrapped, it will survive the journey, but if yours isn't vinyl wrapped, you might want to look at taking the inland route. There's a bit of a hill climb here. I've got the rear locker engaged, so I'm just going to walk the Ranger up. A bit of angle there, nice. And up she goes. Loads of traction, no problem with the locker engaged. No problem with the view over my shoulder too, folks. Look at that. <laughs> Some turquoise waters of the ocean. What a pretty track. We had so much fun out on the dunes that we lost all track of times. So it was a night run into camp. <laughs>